Daredevil Episode 7, Stick. This is definitely a cool episode. We got to meet Daredevil's old mentor and um, pseudo father figure for like the smallest amount of time, apparently. But it was fun. This was definitely a cool episode getting to see one of Daredevil's, you know, someone from Daredevil's past and really the person who trained him and got him on the path to becoming Daredevil. Like, he was just this young kid, Matt Murdock, who the nuns thought were having more and more issues due to his blindness but he was actually his senses were actually growing more and more and what he really needed was a master to help him train and really control and hone control and hone his abilities and that's who stick was that's what he did um he wasn't the nicest person um to do it but he was the person to do it at least and he definitely did and he trained him he taught him you know mentally and physically and he taught him how to use weapons we got to see the sticks um like kind of the real first step of him getting towards real daredevil territory and, and not just being you know the mask the guy in the mask but it was fun it was a really cool episode where we got to see daredevil go up against his mentor first they work together and it's like you know he's saying like you know get rid of your friends and it was like you know you got two friends get rid of them you know, this is just a distraction, you know, the fancy building, the furniture, everything. This is a distraction for you, and it's going to screw you up. It's going to get them killed, and then it's going to get you killed, because you'll be hurt that they were killed. So, all of this crap that you're doing is a complete distraction, and, you know, you're not the warrior that I trained you to be. And in Matt's case, it's like, well, you know, I wanted you to be a father figure, so I guess we're both disappointed. And it was just fun. Like, they team up, and then, of course, things go wrong when um, Black Sky turns out not to be, like, this crazy weird program or weapon or anything. It's this kid who I have to assume was superhuman or something like that, and the kid may not have been able to control his powers, or he could easily be manipulated to use his powers for evil or something like that. And Stick knew that, and, of course, he lied and said, I'm not going to kill anybody. And then that's his whole mission was to make this super awesome bow because i was trying to figure out like when he first took the thing out i'm like he said he wasn't gonna kill anybody and he flat he flat out opens up a case to make a sniper rifle and then he's making it and i'm like it's just it looks just like a stick so i'm like i'm not sure what he's making right now and then they had the little part where he kind of bent it back a little and i'm like he create he had components to make this metal bow which i thought was really cool because it could have been simple he could have just had the bow with him but I guess that would have been a little bit too obvious, like, hey, I'm just going to carry this bow and not, you know, kill anyone. But I thought that was cool, like, he had these, you know, different components to make this bow. Even the arrow itself had, like, two parts to it, and he was, like, screwing it together to make it. But it was fun, like, that was a cool fight scene. And then, of course, we had, like, an, a really awesome fight scene between um, Matt and his mentor, and, you know, Sticks, like... I know you wanted to protect the kid and stuff, but while you were dicking around with your emotions, I killed the kid, and that was it. I stopped this weapon, I did my mission, and everything's done. And, you know, that sends him over the edge, and it was fun to watch that fight. It was cool to see these two characters go up against each other, and Matt um, wasn't really winning at first. I mean, he was being beat up by his master, and that's just how it goes. The mentor, the one who taught you, is the one who's going to beat you up, and you know, he showed his skills in the beginning of this episode. I, I thought he was going to be a villain because I don't really know the comics or anything. I didn't know he was going to, you know, end up being the mentor. He was he literally came in as, like, a blind samurai character where he's, um, he takes this guy out and he's, like, chops his hands off, his one hand off and stuff. And, you know, he has a katana. He's like, you know, his, his family's better off without him. And he does the spin and chops his head off. And, you know, it's like, he's blind. I'm like, this guy's going to be a real serious villain for Daredevil. And it turns out he's just, like, the one-time, you know, pseudo-father figure who really just wanted a warrior but not a son. But he obviously cared enough to keep this little bracelet that Matt made him as a kid all these years. Even though what he says he wanted was just a warrior to help fight this war, whatever it may be. And whoever may be in control, the guy with the, um, like, lashes and stuff on his back, just with a crazy deep voice, so, it was definitely an awesome episode, I love getting to see, um, the recovery of the city, or at least some of the characters, mostly, uh, Foggy and Karen, and how they're dealing with the aftermath of 
everything that happened with the big explosions, like they open things up with them and it's like they're talking about Daredevil and how you know Foggy has one feeling because he's kind of on the outside of things and he's just in the media sense and then you have Karen who was actually saved by Matt and she knows like why would he even waste his time coming in to save me and doing all this and exposing this company if he was just working with the bad guys if he you know was going to do something like this and shoot cops and blow up a bunch of buildings so it was definitely really cool to see um, that little conversation they had in the beginning and then Karen kind of once again doing her thing and talking to Ben and going to Mrs. Cardenas and talking to her and getting a little bit of information and then that led to a pretty awesome scene where Foggy comes in and helps her out and um, I love the scene after he threw it and then he's like, you know, why are you here? And she, they're going back and forth arguing with each other. And then the one guy got up and Karen was just like, Shh, and just sprayed the crap out of his face and just took him down. And um, it may have been the same guy, actually, that Foggy ended up hitting because he got up again. But I thought that was so funny. Like, he helped her out. And then they start arguing. And then she just sprays the good, the sprays one guy. And he, you know, whacks the other guy. And they run off because these two big guys are trying to attack them. So I thought that was a funny little scene. And... Um, it was kind of mentioned that Foggy is in love. Um, that's what Mrs. Cardina said. And I, I found that interesting. Like, they do a lot of uh, moments where some of the words, even though it's easy to figure out, um, a lot of people probably can't figure it out. Like, some stuff people aren't going to know just because they took Spanish in, like, high school or something. Like, a lot of the times when they have simple things, they don't bother putting any subtitles. And then it seems weird when when the words get harder that's when the subtitles come up but it's like why not just have subtitles all the way through so people know a hundred percent of everything because it's some stuff like when she says like information or caution or something like that for me it's like okay well she said information i know what she's asking her right now but when it's other stuff like if some people didn't catch her more some people would have no idea what she said but um what mrs cardinez was saying before um before Karen was like, you know, Jesus, and she kind of freaked out for a second, is that a man isn't, you know, a man can't be more handsome than when he's in love. And I feel like that was something they definitely should have had in the subtitles, because not everyone's going to catch that. Not everyone knows what amor means, or even if she said it that way, then, you know, not everyone's going to know what she just said to her. So I always find it kind of weird where sometimes it's like, uh, people can figure it out and they don't put subtitles and then when it gets hard they bring up subtitles in the middle of the sentence or something or like just in the middle of the conversation and I feel like it's really weird that they don't, they don't just you know have subtitles the entire way through when they're speaking in a different language and you know like why not just do the entire conversation if you're going to do most of it anyway it just seems so weird to take out like it seemed like every first sentence because she was asking simple questions and she repeat words that they already had up there but it would be like she repeats one word out of that whole sentence and it doesn't mean it's the same question you know so I, I've always I found that kind of weird and they've done that in other episodes as well and it just seems so weird that they do stuff like that um like with the Russians I have no idea what they were saying like I know it was simple stuff and it would be like maybe come here or this or that but there's a lot of stuff like I don't know what the heck they were saying. They could have been cussing and you know swearing and saying this and that, but I have no idea because it's like, well, they only said one sentence, so they just don't bother with the subtitles. And they do it so much, it seems weird. Like when they do it in some shows, and it's like, all right, the person said like that one random sentence, and that was it. It's nothing. But the Russians have been a huge part of the show, and when they have these big moments, and it's like you know, it's like, hey, come here. And they don't ever put that there. It's like, I don't know what he's saying to this guy. He's like, come over here, come here. Or like, he's cussing somebody out or something. I don't know. Because they don't put subtitles for like little sentences or something as if we're supposed to know basic come here phrases in every language or something. I, I just find it so weird. And um, it just really stands out to me. Like, it, obviously it bothers me enough to talk about it for this long. But it just stands out a lot. And it stood out a lot in this episode because they kept going back and forth between subtitles and then no subtitles for like one sentence and then back to subtitles because she'd say something like operation and it's like no one's going to know that in Spanish but they kind of assume people are going to know other stuff in Spanish so 
it just stood out a lot, even though it's not that big of a deal in any way, like it even matters. But it just really stands out a lot to me. I don't know if it stood out to any of you guys or you know, if it didn't and now it's going to be in your head. I'm sorry I kind of put that there where it's going to start to bother you. But it just stood out to me from like the very beginning where it's like first sentence, like nothing. And then they start going through like a sentence or two and then it's like, boom, here's subtitles now. And it's just like, what the heck? Like at one point... There was an actual sentence that started with dot, 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 and then they kept going. And it was like, I don't know what he said in the first part. Just because it was like a simple Russian sentence, I don't know what that was. Like, So it just, it stands out a lot. But it didn't ruin anything in the episode. Obviously, it affected me because I'm complaining about it. But it didn't ruin the episode or anything like that. I still love this scene. Um, Karen bringing Foggy into the fold was actually a nice little surprise at the end of the episode. I wasn't expecting that one at all. And I think it would be really cool in that will kind of be how they're able to blend things together. Eventually, Matt's going to be brought into it because if she trusts Foggy, at some point they're going to talk to Matt as soon and be like, well, I don't know this or I don't know that. Maybe we should bring Matt in on this so that we, just so we can get another fresh set of eyes. And it'll be four of us working on this crazy thing. And then, of course, that'll help Matt out with anything and everything because he'll have been to kind of work off of to get even more leads and obviously that will help him as daredevil but this is a cool episode they they're obviously leading into something really really crazy and huge with this all-out war that's apparently been brewing for decades now like it was happening or you know in the works even before stick met matt when, as a little kid and it's still not a, not happening until later in the season maybe even um next season i hope not or at least we get like an introduction to the craziness but it seems like one of those things they could easily introduce now and it's like well we got the fisk stuff going and you know now we have this going which will save for season two after he beats fisk which i don't know if he will because there are only 13 episodes in the season and that's one of the things i'm really curious about is what are they gonna do like is Fisk gonna be taken out like he's a huge character in the comics and obviously he's like this huge player as far as being in control of the city he is the main villain so what will be resolved and what won't be resolved by the end of the season really has me guessing because it's you know all basically halfway through and now it's like well they still have the stuff with Fisk and he's just doing his thing and he's only just starting in season one but it's not like he's just got every anything and everything he's got a bunch of money and a bunch of men but obviously he's having issues he has the russians who he had to take out he has whoever this random person is that's even above him that he's worried about and i would have to assume that's nobu's boss and um that's who stick was mentioning like if you help me you know attack the man that even fisk is afraid of then that'll you know kind of put him in his place and he'll know who he's really dealing with, you know, as far as the man in the mask. But I'm not 100% sure what to expect. I'm definitely excited for it, though, because it's been a great show so far. And now they've introduced a new, a new layer. I can't wait to see Stick come back in. And I've seen a couple clips. I try to avoid as many spoilers as I can. I tried not to even see the um, actual costume, but unfortunately, YouTube likes to have the little interactive things, and it automatically switched one day when I was on YouTube. And I was like, crap, now I've seen it. So... Unfortunately, I've seen the, the um, full costume, or at least the top half, but you know, I've kind of seen the costume before he's actually had it in the show, but I saw a couple of other little stills and stuff where he was training and things like that, and I don't know if that was actually Stick or someone random, or honestly, even if it was flashbacks, because it could have been flashbacks of him as an adult, but still before he got into um, being a lawyer and stuff like that, so... I'm not sure where it was exactly. I just assume, honestly, that it was in a later episode because it looked like he was in some sort of costume and he had, like, the stakes um, with, like, the zip line in between them. Like, um, by the time he made it into the whole um, cane as his weapon and stuff. So, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But I'm definitely excited for it, of course. I want to know what you guys thought about this episode, though. So, please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And, of course, my question is, what did you guys think of Stig and... His personality, his, you know, training, his odd demeanor where it's like, I only wanted a warrior, but, you know, the end of the episode, Matt's sitting there and he finds this little crinkled up piece of paper that, 
he made over 20 years ago. So, you know, it's, it's, he's one of those characters where it's like he says this, but he at least feels some sort of personal connection to someone who is very similar to him and trying to do the same thing and protect something. I'm not sure if Stig's really trying to save the world or even the city, but he's trying to save something. He's, uh, I think, a little bit bigger. I think he's trying to save a lot more than just Hell's Kitchen because of whatever Black Sky was. It seemed like it was going to be far more dangerous than just, you know, messing up Hell's Kitchen. But, I don't know, he's, he's almost, he, as much info as we got on his character, based on the ending, he's still a bit of an enigma and whoever he's working with and this, this exact war that's happening is still a big question. So, I'm not 100% sure what to get out of the guy, but I want to know what you guys think about him. So, please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.